this story might have ended a lot differently if this kangaroo got his own bedroom and like maybe a PlayStation. Brunch, hit it, boys! <laughs> Well, that didn't take long. A uh, kangaroo has murdered his owner, Pete. What a what a take by you, huh? You picked the one animal, and we we discussed it. You picked the one animal that has a bad day, and we'll just snap your neck. Not bad. Not I mean, <laughs> bad for the seventy-seven year old man with quote serious injuries on his property Sunday in. Semi-rural Redmond, 400 kilometers southeast of Western Australia, state capital, Perth. Uh, This is from NPR. A man who may have been keeping a wild kangaroo as a pet was killed by the animal in southwest Australia. Police said Tuesday it was reportedly the first fatal attack by a kangaroo in Australia since 1936. We're not making fun of this man. Uh, He's a legend, certainly for us. I mean, we just discussed what a... What a hot thing that might be to just keep a kangaroo at the old house. This man was doing it up until he died. And oddly enough, the two things ended up being related. (laughs) Did they say what the kangaroo did to this man? It was believed he had been attacked earlier in the day by the kangaroo, which police shot dead because it was preventing paramedics from reaching the injured man, police said. Quote, the kangaroo was posing an ongoing threat to emergency responders, the statement said. Okay, so this all kind of does make sense in that a kangaroo could kill you many different ways. And most of it is either punch related or threat of a punch related. Like I or was kick related. Kick. Because they, they can stand on their tails and kick you. True. Yeah, that's crazy. I was thinking about this, though. Like there is a number of different ways a kangaroo can get you. Where, like, you could just wake up and the kangaroo could have tied you to the bed. And you'd be like, all right, real funny kangaroo. And the kangaroo just sits in front of the bed and is like, you are going to starve to death. And you're like, what? Just sipping a hot tea, watching you slowly fade away. Yeah, and the kangaroo's like, nothing is happening here. If you get up, I'm punching you. So good luck with that. Yeah, man. Kangaroos. The man died at the scene. Police are preparing a report for a coroner who will record an official cause to death. Police believe the victim had been keeping the wild kangaroo as a pet. I'll tell you what. I'm looking at pictures of these kangaroos they're throwing, showing here. Maybe I'm confused. I'm not seeing any joeys. <laughs> I don't think that they're inherently a package pair, uh, as you seem to uh, presume. <laughs> Okay. The, the last time that we discussed about it. I don't think the, the kangaroos always have joeys. They can't always have joeys because joeys grow up to become full-grown kangaroos That is at some very point. true. They have to grow at some point. So at some point... But here's, here's, but here's a, here's a theory. Uh, because the kangaroo doesn't have a joey, is it, is it stressing out about empty nest syndrome? And uh, maybe that's why it got violent. It's, it's like, just... It's dealing with a lot right now because there's, there's an empty nest. Tanya Irwin, who cares for the macropods at the Native Animal Australia Service in Perth, sounds like a real Jurassic Park character. Is that a a descendant of Steve Irwin? Cannot help but notice the last name. I was watching a WNBA game last night, and uh, one of the players on uh, the Connecticut Sun is named Dewana Bonner. And it was the first WNBA game I'd watched in a while, and I was like, is this like Matt Bonner, Luke Bonner, Becky Bonner? Certain names, if they're just associated strongly with something, you hear that name again, you're like, ah, there simply can't be two families. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll tell you what, though, I guarantee when Tanya Irwin travels outside of Australia, she's getting that question constantly, especially when saying what she does for work. Yeah, right. I mean, it's crazy that, that she's not related. Quote, this looks like it was an adult male and they became... They become quite aggressive, and they don't do well in captivity. We don't know what the situation was, if he was in pain or why he was being kept in captivity, and unfortunately, they're not a cute animal. They're a wild animal. 
I'll tell you what, that's very good insight from Irwin. A, to frame that, again, it's very sad this man died, but these animals are not supposed to be kept in captivity. And this guy was keeping this animal captive. Kangaroos famously just want to, I don't know, like walk around with their joeys outside. That's right. Punch things with impunity. Stand on their tails and kick. But that that uh that brings up the question of uh like should they have killed the kangaroo? I don't I don't because... like the idea that there was some like it's not quite Harambe, but that the cops showed up and I understand blasted. but it's like I understand that like you have to I understand killing the kangaroo so that you can get to the guy because he's preventing you from getting but like can't they just like sedate the kangaroo? Why do you in like I don't like the idea of killing the kangaroo when this guy was keeping it captive inside his house. And I don't know, like that guy was in the wrong. That is true. There should be, right, just use some sedatives. I think that there is a question of whether uh, whether, uh, whether lethal force was used unnecessarily. I'd love to put these cops uh, on trial, maybe take them to kangaroo court. Oh, 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 oh. look at this guy. Look at this guy. Just a little something I thought of there. <laughs> All right, so uh, rest in peace to that man. Rest it's in a, peace to that kangaroo. Yes, that, rest in that, peace that, to that, all parties that's involved. The more, that's the more tragic story all, uh, on my end. I mean, as a prospective kangaroo owner, <laughs> I've learned a little something. I don't know that that's I've been... true. I don't know if th- this news story is a successful deterrent. I think that just... Don't get a kangaroo until you have a big enough place. <laughs> That's right. Until you can afford to like give it its own dedicated space. You don't want to. You don't want a kangaroo with a one bedroom apartment. Exactly right. Like don't get a dog. At if you least live in give a him studio. his own room. Nothing wrong with if you live in a studio, but like you can't have a dog. Yeah, may, this 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 story might have ended a lot differently if this kangaroo got his own bedroom and like maybe a PlayStation. <laughs> A rich man was caught keeping a kangaroo captive when noise of a surprise birthday party thrown <laughs> by the very happy kangaroo <laughs> alerted neighbors. <laughs> the kangaroo is distraught. The kangaroo was screaming as they took the 77-year-old hero <laughs> to jail. <laughs> That's amazing. Hell yeah. All right, we got uh, that. Did, uh, here's another story that I wanted to talk about. Uh, did you hear about the the chess scandal, the U.S. chess scandal? No. Give it to me. Uh, there is a U.S. chess grandmaster scandal uh, alleging. Got to change that, that term, by the way. I've never liked it. It sounds. Grandmaster. It somehow sounds it sounds like KKK-ish. racist. Yeah. 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 I agree. Anytime you use the word like grand and master. Yeah. No. Uh, you are weird. like wizard away from the <laughs> racist hat trick. Uh, there is a 19 year old chess grandmaster who is being accused of using anal beads and artificial intelligence to beat the world's number one chess player. I mean, the, the scandal is that uh, the San Francisco-born Hans Niemann, a relative newcomer to the sport, inserted wireless vibrating anal beads into his body before his victorious match against world number one grandmaster Magnus Carlsen last week. He said the uh, the allegations are that he used a uh, another person who vibrated the anal beads to tell him what moves to make. Okay, and where were the anal beads placed again? In his buttocks. Okay, so he was using them. Uh, he was like reading the the package correctly. That's right. Yes. Uh, in a since deleted tweet, Elon Musk weighed in on the controversy. <laughs> Wonder what he said by quoting philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer, writing, "Talent hits a target no one else can hit. Genius hits a target no one else can see." In parentheses, because it's in your butt. <laughs> All right. Uh, not... Responding to the rumors that he had used anal beads to cheat at the competition, Neiman said, quote, if they want me to strip fully naked, I'll do it. 
<laughs> I don't care because I know I'm clean. You want me to cl play in a closed box with zero electronic transmission? I don't care. I'm here to win, and that's my goal regardless. Okay, so this seems like a real, like... Oh, what? What What, what, what do I got to get naked to prove? That, that's what... Remember when baseball players were doing that? When umps would check, would do, like, hat checks and stuff? Is that yeah. what they were doing? And... Uh, uh, Checking the hats, checking the hands, mm -hmm. yeah. and pitchers were such babies about it. They're like, "Oh yeah, you want me to?" And one of them like took off their his pants, right? Didn't he? Like took off his belt, and he's like, "What? Well, you want me to strip naked?" But and the ump is like, "That is exactly not what I am asking you." And he's like, "All right, fine, I'll strip naked. Fuck, it's so ridiculous. Like I get no. Let me let me get my underwear off too. Here, all right, there. All right, my penis is out. You happy now?" It's like this seems like a really roundabout way for you just really wanting to show everybody your penis. <laughs> yeah, right. Some real Randy Marsh vibes. Yeah, his chest master is like, oh, you guys want to see my butthole? Here's my butthole. Fine, all right, get a good look. All right, we're the cameras here. Ugh. You happy now? You happy? Yeah, this all could have been avoided. It all could have been avoided. Hey, Pete, let's get to this weekend in fun presented by Vizzy Hard Seltzer, the only... Hard seltzer with super fruit acerola. Okay. We don't uh, we don't have that segment, but we're going to take it out on loan because we actually probably should recap our weekend this episode because we did tease that uh, you were making your tank debut, but we did more of that. We had ourselves a full day on Saturday, even though I was and am, am still under the weather. Pete, what would you do Saturday? Went to Idle Hands Brewery. What'd you do first? We went to a bar to watch Texas. Nice. And Texas almost beat the number one ranked team in the country, Alabama. Previously number one ranked team in the country, Alabama. And then they chunked it. So this is a, this is a classic combination of, uh, of this weekend and fun and this week in chunking. Yes. I honestly don't even know... Do you believe that Texas chunked it? I do believe that Texas chunked it because uh, I, I do partially. Number one, because they missed like a 20-yard field goal at the end of the half. Oh, that would have right. been the difference in the game. That one was real tough. Uh, and then number two, I just don't think that Sark was aggressive enough. He uh, he went for too many field goals when they were on uh, on the – not on the goal line, but like very much in the red zone, threatening on the goal line. Uh, too many field goals. Not not aggressive enough. Had too many opportunities to uh, to put Alabama away. They did not take it. But on the other hand, you lost your starting quarterback in the first quarter, uh, which was devastating because Quinn Ewers was looking amazing. He was before he went down. And then uh, number two, the refs were awful. The refs had a horrible game, and very much seemed to be gifting Alabama a lot of opportunities that they uh, that they shouldn't have been gifted. I hate whenever a topic, uh, especially at work and stuff, is like, were the refs the difference in this game? And I'm like, we only, we only say this if our team lost. And it's such a loser's mentality and everything. But objectively, <laughs> the refs were very bad and very clearly in favor of Alabama. Like, the safety was the... Yeah. most absurd thing in the world. And then the, 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 the only thing they could essentially review was whether they were tossing the kid out of the game. And it was like, gee, like we were, not, we, we not had giving no audio. Them the so we were not screaming. giving them the safety was wild, but then they also missed a horrible blatant face mask in the red zone. Mm -hmm. uh, that would have put, uh, would have put Texas basically on the one with a first down. I will also, uh, I'll come around to Texas chunking it based on Sark because you are right. He was very conservative even early in the game, even before Quinn uh, Ewers got hurt. There was some like, huh, wouldn't have done that on second down or whatever. And I'm a Sark guy. Yeah, big Sark guy. We all know, A, we're both nice guys. Me, me and you are nice guys. We root for the man. B, how many Armenian football coaches are there? <laughs> That's right. So, got to pull for him. Not his finest hour. I think that, honestly, though, given game ball to Hudson Card. 
Yeah, he was a warrior, man. He game could barely ball. walk at the end of that game and was still was still running. And, he was and hindered well. by both injury and his skill set. Lack of yeah, and his lack of skills. But he, man, he was very close to getting the job done. And honestly, considering he was going against freaking Alabama, he in my eyes he was getting the job done. He he let a rip like two times, <laughs> and it was a real bummer. I, I still, though, t- I, I more came away from it being like, wow, what a game. Yeah. But there were so what many a team. factors of like, it that could have changed. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I think that if you were stayed in the game, they definitely would have won. Uh, and if the refs hadn't, like, legitimately taken off at least three to ten points, mm-hmm. they would have obviously won. But overall, like, hard to feel terrible about it. I mean, it didn't feel good about it because it would have been amazing had they beat Alabama, and I really think that they could have, and they chunked it. <laughs> but, like, defense played really, really well. Uh, they didn't make a lot of mistakes outside of, like, missing the the 20-yard field goal, which really is still haunting me. But, uh, you know, I think that Sark was, was just, like, a little bit too conservative. He was, it seemed like the classic case of playing – not to lose instead of to win. And like one of those times they needed to, to be real aggressive and go for a touchdown. Yeah, man. And like maybe it's just going around with Texas football teams because famously the Houston Texans did the same thing in overtime against the Colts. And it's like, well, this is this way we could have avoided a loss. And it's like, yo, you're probably getting a loss. Just kind of read the room. If, the, if you can take that risk, especially in college football, man. That's what that's the best thing about college football. Where if a team knows it's inferior, it just does some riskier shit. And yeah. the team and the better team is frustrated because it's like, that's so annoying. It's like when you're playing Madden. Like it's so annoying that you went for it on fourth down there. You would never go for it on fourth down. It's like, well, if I'm desperate, I would. Right. So, yeah. It's like if I know I can't stop you, or like I know that you're gonna score at least 17 points, I gotta score. Yeah. We took in the game at uh, at Earl's in Assembly Row. It was a very nice time. We were the only people at the bar who were into the Texas game, but yeah, we were like aired. But I did get hit with a roll tide uh, walking to Earl's. Nice. So weren't the only people in Assembly Row that cared about the game? Just the only people watching it, apparently. So throughout the day, you kept getting from strangers some like, hey, man, tough loss and everything. And uh, I felt very left out because uh, you were wearing Texas gear and I was not famously out of fear that we have a lot of the same Texas gear and we did not coordinate what we were wearing when we were going to the bar, which that's probably the first time we've ever done that. And so as I was leaving my apartment... I frantically took off my Texas hat for fear that we would be wearing the same exact Texas hat. And I don't know what else I tossed on. But anyway, you were getting the you were getting all of like the sympathy uh Yeah, I was the, the, the sympathy salutations throughout the day. And I was feeling a little left out. But it was a nice time. I'm trying to do this in true this weekend in fun fashion. It was a I nice... also think you're, that's a little bit of a cop out by you because I Part of me wonders if you didn't wear your Texas gear because you thought they were going to get killed because you famously thought that they were going to get oh, killed. Oh, that is that is true. I was the only person, I think, in the entire country that suggested Texas could beat Alabama. That is true. Oh, and I, I give you all the credit in the world for that. I loved uh, – you went on the – was it Too Much Dip? Yeah. You did the Too Much Dip live stream and started kind of slow with, like, I think – like the, the the money line is or the spread is a good play for Texas. Also, the money line. Uh, Bryce Young isn't very good, and this is the beginning of the end for Nick Saban. <laughs> just, yeah, just really really picked, picked up, up steam. Up steam. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, they're definitely going to lose by less than twenty. They're also going to win win outright. Bryce Young isn't very good, and Nick Saban is finished. <laughs> I'm kind of with you on I, – I, definitely not an impressive Bryce Young performance. Made no, he didn't get a lot of help. The, yeah, made a great play in the fourth quarter, which also could fall into, like, tex, uh, Texas chunking it, just, like, take the guy down. But that was – I saw a lot of people saying that was, like, some Heisman-worthy play, getting out of that sack. 
letting her rip. So annoying. No, I, I would say like two of the like three best quarterback plays in that game were made by Quinn Ewers, and he played a quarter. <laughs> yeah. Devastating. He looked awesome. And now he's out four to six weeks, and the uh, the Oklahoma game's in four weeks. So mm. I'm uh, quite distraught. We were floating around the idea of going – going to uh austin just to watch the red river game yeah even though it's in oklahoma but i don't think that that's a good idea if if it's hudson card yeah i'm, t- I'm <laughs> leading the boys i'm kind of card hive i know you are it makes me so mad have you ever seen friday night lights the t- television show i sure have famously the kid can't put on his helmet and <laughs> then he ends up leading him to state so what you're saying is that uh, Hudson Card needs to start dating Sark's daughter, who I don't even know if he has a daughter. But that's really the, when the magic picks up for Saracen. Yeah, and Quinn Ewers will never walk again. <laughs> God. Yeah, that, that famous clavicle injury famously prevents you from, from walking. With a little hope in the good book, you just may be able to get out there. I hope he gets back soon, man. I am... I am Hudson Hive because I, I, I don't want to say that he sucks or anything, but I think like we we've learned and we know kind of what he is. So for him to go in there and manage the game, get the job done made me, it made me very happy for him. Like I'm sh- I, he probably came out of that game being like, damn, that was my opportunity. But I come out of it being like, Hey man, you didn't fall on your face in a spot where a yeah. lot of people much more talented and much more experienced than you would because they'd just be caught off guard. But Sark didn't really let him fall on his face. <laughs> it's a, it's hilarious how much the playbook and like the offensive strategy changed when they switched quarterbacks because they were slinging the ball yes. with, with Ewers in there. And then as soon as he went down, they ran the ball like 90% of the time. Yeah. Uh, enjoyed a, a Vizzy spiked seltzer while watching the game. Then made the switch to Modelo. And what did I get? Oh, ate some bacon and eggs. That was pretty nice. You had a little Benedict situation going on, didn't you? I did. Cumber I have an eggs, eggs Benny, and it was, it was tremendous. You also did a Guinness off the top. You did that. What kind of football we watching? Doesn't matter. I'm at a bar at noon. That's right. That's, the, that's, that's my classic move. It's a breakfast beer, and there is no better breakfast beer than a, than a Guinness. I'll tell you, I I would guess I've had fewer than 10 Ginnai in my life. Sounds like whoever just drove by you had some Guinness in them because what the vroom, fuck? Vroom, 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 vroom. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really? Are you like, are you not about it or are you just, you never think of it? I'm just not the, I, I more I never think of it. I would just rather... Yeah. Any other sort of light beer. But Guinness, famously, right, is like the uh, lowest in calories or lowest in fat or something like that. It's very – it's a, and it's very light. It, people think that, that it's it's like heavy, a heavy beer just because of the how dark it is. Yeah. They but judge it's not a, heavy at all. They judge a beer by its cover. That's You're right. not supposed to do that. I had a Guinness Friday night and Saturday after, morning slash afternoon. Nice. So uh, real, real double dip. From the game, we made our way to Idle Hands Brewery in Walden, Massachusetts, where we immediately sank friend of the podcast, Michael Hurley. I'll tell you what, I, I, I went in the tank, but all of my good tank memories this year are from the line because I was sinking fuckers. I was by far the best thrower of the dunk tank this year. And I couldn't even think of somebody who could be a second place. There was one person wearing a Bissell brothers shirt who was really more about the intimidation. She was oh, man. whipping that thing and she was really, gassing it and really humming, right? Really circling right around the, like she went uh, against me a, a few times and I was terrified. I don't think she ever sunk me, but every time she threw, I would just like, look at the, I'd look back to the party and be like, I am so scared for when she hits because, like, I think this whole machine is going to break. This whole mechanism is going. Yeah. I don't think her intentions were were warning shots, 
because she was like very angry and aggressive and i really think that she obviously wanted to sink us yeah uh but like it it did have like the um it did have like a feel of warning shots because she was painting the corners yeah she was like really she was being real intimidating and then painting the corners you know what it felt like the worst feeling in little league other than having to play baseball uh the worst feeling was when you were up next like leading off an inning and they bring in a new kid and the kids warming up and just throwing like a maniac and you're like is there is there nobody here who can remove this person from this situation we're gonna let this happen and then you're the first person up i man tell you what i was taking one step out as soon as as soon as that kid went into their delivery man i wish i could like go back and play little league baseball with the brain that i have right now because famously i still have a little league baseball body yeah um but like like i would if i was a pitcher I would intentionally be all over the place during warmups mm. and, and just like instill some fear into the guy stepping into the box being like, I have no idea this guy can't control his pitching at all. And then just hustle him. There was one kid. I remember who he was a tall kid came in and during warmups, he was, or in between innings, he was throwing nothing like laughably slow pitches, not warming up at all. Just basically like, I am not telling you what I have. And I was terrified getting into the box <laughs> against that kid. And then he, th- I mean, I, I don't think he even threw particularly hard, but there's, there's a lot of good uh, ways to torment your opposition in those settings. Anyway, uh, sunk Michael Hurley, I think possibly multiple times. He was wearing a suit. Uh, then it was time for the, oh no, then I was after Hurley. And I had as close to an ideal dunk tank experience as you could get. I a, I didn't get hurt. Although every time I did get back into the seat, I was, I must have looked like an idiot because I was really being extra careful and like was legitimately scared as I was making each movement. But I got sunk five times max. And... Mm. Got a good, got a good, healthy representative representation of throwers, so I was up there for a good amount of time. Didn't get sunk that many times, so my risk of injury was small. It was, a, it is a little nerve wracking though when you're going long between getting sunk. Yeah, you were up there for like like an eight minute span. Yeah, where you just were just sitting and not getting wet. Yeah, and every time somebody threw, I just looked over at you. It was like <laughs> that could have been the one. Oh, there was a kid who uh, I was, like, lightly heckling people as they were throwing to me. And there was a kid who uh, was throwing against me. And I was like, oh, is that all you got and everything? And then I realized, A, he's a kid. And, B, he was coming a lot closer than a lot of the adults. So <laughs> I became very complimentary of that kid. I uh, I famously got dunked more than anybody else up there everybody like, i don't know if anybody missed when you were up there did no any- i don't think so i don't think anybody uh like struck out <laughs> that was that was good it followed the uh it followed the stein hoisting contest it did uh and a real disappointing showing for me in the stein hoisting contest you believed that i had a great chance to win you thought that you were like bringing in a ringer yeah you you were about to bet your life savings that I was going to win the Stein hoisting contest. And I did. I bet somebody a beer. Uh, okay. And uh, I didn't even come close. I would say maybe I lasted like two minutes. <laughs> maybe. We're not. And it uh, was really hard. All right. We're not doing any jokes there. Credit to us. Nope. And yep. uh, yeah, you did a very mature thing, which was so uh, the. You now understand the serious nature of this Stein Hoisting contest because now you've seen it. And maybe were you were you at all intimidated? The you were the second round to go. The women went and then the men went. Seeing the women and how intense that is and how like seriously the dunk tank is getting maybe an eighth of the crowd's uh interest or par- and or participation. The Stein Hoisting contest the entire place shuts down for that yeah. and is screaming, going nuts. 
the uh, awesome showing from the the women. The person I thought was going to win did not win. They came in second. But did was there any sense of like, oh, this is business? Uh, like for me or for were you else? like okay, like this is more of a thing than maybe I thought or. Yeah, it was definitely more of a thing. Uh, there were definitely more people involved than I expected. Like, I didn't expect the entire table to fill up with, like, there was barely any room to move. Yeah. And, like, when I was getting, when I was holding my Stein up, like, I got bumped a few times, and that, like, really didn't make me happy. It could mess with your equilibrium. Yeah, right. Or maybe they're just, uh, that's like their version of trash talking. Get inside your head. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I was a newcomer. There was trash talk. Like, the guy who is the back-to-back-to-back uh, Stein hoisting champion uh, knew who I was. I, I don't know if, like, I think he's a hockey guy. Oh, okay. So he, he, was, uh, he was a fan. He was very excited that you were there, yes. And uh, he was, I, I started talking some trash to him because I was like, yeah, I'm taking you down on the Stein hoisting. And he was like, ah. That's good trash. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, just some ruthless. What was stuff. his comeback? Don't cancel me. <laughs> uh, you no, really went there. Like, People had he, cameras, man. They could have. They could have got. He laughed that. in my face, and f- obviously for good reason because he won again, <laughs> over seven minutes, and so about seven and a half minutes high, uh, holding that Stein, which is preposterous. He did cheat though. It he seemed did like cheat. yeah, some light cheating. You're gonna he, get uh, cheating. He was accused of cheating by several people, one of them being me, because he was <laughs> holding his thumb on top of the uh, on top of the handle, which you're not allowed to do. You have to go thumb on the outside of the knuckles. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then some other guy accused him of resting his arm on top of his pectoral muscle. Oh, wow. So he, he got accused of cheating twice. Wow. That not only is cheating, but it's offensive to TJ Watt. That's right. <laughs> R.I.P. T.J. Watt. Some people can't rest on their pectoral muscles. I love the way you phrase it. You said he was accused of several people, one of them being me. I, I'm i taking your word for it. I definitely did notice that you accused him of cheating. Yes. <laughs> there was a lot of, what the hell, he cheated. <laughs> I, was... wasn't, I wasn't the only, I wasn't the only uh, person to throw out the word, the, the C word. Okay. Involving this guy. Uh, I do like that guy though. He's uh, he was great, yeah. He's he's very into it, not to a relaxed dude extent. Right. In like a hey, this is what I do, so I'll be coming here, and I'll be picking up this glass and holding it. You uh, did a little, you did a little Tim Heidecker in season two of I think you should leave when he asks if he can get the drink for free, where you asked our friend Josh of Idle Hands, hey. You got these bonkers ceramic mugs that you're selling. Can we have them for free, please? I didn't. I didn't do that. I said that I would right, buy you said, one. You said I'd like to buy one. Yeah. And he was like, "Let me see what I can do." And I said, "I was like, do you got any more of those those uh, ceramic steins? Because I definitely want one of those." Uh, and he was like, well, "Let's see if I have any left over at the end of the night." <laughs> and so that's when I like figured out that he assumed that I was just asking for it for free. But I was like, "Do you have any that I can buy?" Yeah. So anyway, and then he just gave me one for free. So thank by you. Uh, by some weird twist, we just ended up staying till the end of the night and uh, kind of hovering around him, circling him, <laughs> saying, "Oh no, I'm not leaving. I'm just getting another one. What time do you close? Because I'll be here at the end of the night." <laughs> He's the best. And Idle Hands, the man. It, it was a great turnout. It was a great day. We had some friends show up. Uh, your one of your nephews was in the house. Yep. And yep. got to dunk not, you. Not the one that I uh, acquired from you. No. In the uh, draft day trade. Uh, yeah, he 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 was a uh, he was quite amused by me being dunked, which was not a, not a surprise. You you called that, and that was correct. He loved watching you get dunked. He also got the most free throws of anybody at the entire event. Oh yeah. I was staying next to him. Paid, was... for, paid for three, and he took about seventy-five. Because I, so we basically went up to like right in front of the button, and he was throwing it, and it would fall. Like it would fall at my feet, and I'm not gonna take it away and be like, 
well, maybe work harder, make a little more money, and you can sink him. So after the first two, which he would get back because he had three, he just kind of fell into the expectation of, ah, this is unlimited. And eventually he got you. And yeah. he was good. Well, you and him had very different experiences from the line because he hit the uh, the target and oh. didn't dunk me, whereas you missed the target and somehow dunked me. Right. I think I, I was getting some pitching tips from uh, old Bissell brothers because <laughs> one of them, yeah, I just whipped, and it was to, like, the right of the target, so it must have hit the bar that makes the mechanism go, and you went. But the best time I hit you was one that uh, Michael Hurley captured on video. Definitely not a flattering video of me, but still a very good time. I hit the target. You throw your hands up like, oh, man, he got me. The ball bounces off the target into the tank and hits you as you're going down. <laughs> so I hit you twice, and I was so pumped up that I was doing some, like, fist-bumping gestures, and uh, uh, my, my belly just kind of came out of my shirt for a second, and it, <laughs> did, it did not look very flattering. I've been a little out of control on the eating and drinking front, and that was, uh, that was some wake-up call stuff. But whatever was uh, Jim Morrison. I feel like a tank. It's okay. <laughs> you never heard that? No. Jim Morrison famously got fat and of the Doors. Yes. And I never knew that he got fat. Yeah, and he got uh, he. I feel like the only picture that exists of Jim Morrison is, is the one, one where he is the one <laughs> yeah. where he's like has his arms out like he's Jesus. Yeah, we all know the one. That's the only picture of Jim Morrison. Let me uh, find this quote from Jim Morrison where he says, uh, damn it, I searched for Jim Morrison tank and then I got a bunch of tank tops. That is a really hot picture of Jim Morrison. So I understand why it is the only one that exists. Okay, so he said, what's wrong with being fat? That's something that he said. And then he also said, uh, so, so this is the interview. The transcript. Are you hungry? Why do you ask that? Well, maybe we could order some sandwiches, something, blah, blah. Did you have breakfast this morning? Yeah. You did? What did you have? Little things like chocolate cake and tea here. Is that all you had? That's all I want. You should eat more. I don't, wait. All right. Anyway. What wait, is going you, on? Uh, you put on a lot of weight. Are you eating a lot? That's something that really bothers me. What's wrong with being fat? That's what I want to know. Why is there such a... I didn't say there's anything wrong with it. And he goes on. It's a very long quote, so I'm not going to say it. But first, that's like a kind of weird way to interview somebody. To be like, hey, how's food going? Yeah, right. What did you eat today? Oh, this. That's it? Really? Be honest now. Anyway, he says, I felt like a tank, you know. I felt like a large mammal, a big beast. When I'd move through the corridors across the lawn, I just feel like I could knock anybody out of the way. So he was saying it felt okay being fat. So Rock I guess on, brother. So that 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 was me on uh that was me. On Jim Morrison's Saturday. got some Walton Goggins to him. Yeah. Like face wise? Yeah. Yeah. They could be related, but they don't have the same last name. No. So it can't be a uh an Irwin or Bonner situation. Hey, how about an advertisement situation? Ah, that's a good call. Now a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. We're uh, we're big fans of, of taking care of our mentals on this podcast. We talk about it quite a bit. Very, very important. Make sure that you're taking care of yourself. And uh, taking care of your mind is probably the best way to get started on doing that. You can take care of your body, but if your mind isn't right, nothing else is going to fall into place. So uh, how well would you take care of your car if you had to keep one the, sa the same one your entire life? Ask DJ because his car fell apart and he just had to sell it for like $400. I, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's how our brains work. So why don't we treat them that way? You got you to gotta invest into upkeep, maintenance. And uh, for both of us, that includes therapy. And uh, it's very, very important. Keeps us right on track. So if you're trying to get into therapy or you want to... Um, you know, expand your therapy horizons. Try BetterHelp because uh, BetterHelp was my introduction to therapy. It was uh, how I took the first step 
And it's online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat only therapy, therapy sessions. So if you don't want anybody to, to see you, you don't have to. You can do it over the phone. You can do it without your camera on. Um, it's much more affordable than in-person therapy. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Uh, they do their best to match you with a therapist that is best suited to what you need. And if you don't like the therapist that they give you, the turnaround on finding a new one is very quick as well. Uh, so if you want to try BetterHelp, get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash brunch. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash brunch. Get out there and take care of your mentals. As usual, forgot to pump the Patreon, but got to say, it's been a real whopper of a month content wise thus far on the, the Patreon front. You got prompted on there with Will DeFreeze where... You gave us some prompts and we kicked them around. It's what really started this whole kangaroo nonsense. Got tomato fights with Adam Jones on old school versus draft day, a battle of 60s, which if you haven't watched or listened to yet, that was one of my favorite tomato fights. It was a blast. I was listening to the radio the other day. Jones was on and he's just talking about old school. That guy, or not old school, uh, draft day. That guy cannot get draft day out of his mind or life. And I love that. He's bringing it to work. Yeah, I do love that. I mean, I mean, he sent more tweets about the Tomato Fights episode than we did. Like, he just kept tweeting about how much he loves Draft Day. And I appreciate that from Adam Jones. It was one of my favorite uh, uh, Tomato Fights episodes. It was our first in, like, six months. Well worth the wait. It was a great time. If you, uh, you want to watch the video, get on Patreon. Uh, also, the podcast feed through Patreon as well. So... Uh, that is up there, and we're going to do uh, a return to one of our favorite Patreon exclusives this, this week one's as well. For us. Yeah. We're going to be returning to uh, Dawson's Creek. A little place called The Creek. Ever heard of it? Losers. What, what's uh, what's um, the name of the town? It's Cape something? Cape. Cape, Cape Side. Cape Side. Cape, Cape Side, Side, Massachusetts. Uh, famously a real place. Yes. Um, so we're returning to Cape Side, Massachusetts this Friday. So uh, if you like the, the Dawson's Creek stuff or you want to see what it's about, patreon.com slash listen to brunch. Even if you don't, one of the best features of the Patreon is you get to pick a number when we watch that Dawson's is Creek. True. So look out for that at some point uh, Wednesday or Thursday. The episode will come out on Friday. Patreon.com slash listen to brunch. If you love the podcast, if you like getting the bonus content, Get on there. It helps us a lot. We've been uh, we've been splurging on some upgrades so and trying to get some more videos out there. You've probably noticed that. That's all coming from the Patreon. So if you want to get more of that stuff, please, patreon.com slash listen to brunch. We love you for it. We do have new art coming, by the way. And uh, if you're wondering whether or not it involves a kangaroo, duh. It's just we're just gonna get new art. It's gonna be a kangaroo. Don't don't spoil this prize too much, but I'm very excited about that new art. I'll say that when uh, I sent the request to the artist or the description, there was a lot of what? Excuse me. <laughs> and then I explained, and they were like, "What?" <laughs> so they don't have to get it; they just have to draw it. Yeah, there. <laughs> we were discussing the famous Tortuga quote the other day there are two men in this world men who drink and men who pour that is such a that is such a good such a good quote that You're, is such a devastating quote i mean it's great because he gets killed like one second later <laughs> dick uh, but there look there are two men in this world men who want art of kangaroos and men who make art of kangaroos so please, for this money, could you please make the kangaroo for me? I don't know how to do it. Uh, one of the interesting things that happened this week, speaking of men who drink and men who pour, uh, we've, we've discussed previously that I'm in the market for a condo in Portland. Ooh, yeah. And now I'm weighing my options because one of my friends proposed to me this week if I would like to go in on a bar with him. Was this sincere? Yes. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, like, there is, like, a legitimate ownership group that, like, we're putting together to, like, 
potentially make an offer on a bar, that which would... would be outrageous, but I would strongly consider it. That would be so cool. How much time would you have to be there? I don't think like that would have to be like worked out, but like I would spend like a good amount of time there, but I don't think that I would have to. You could be like an absentee owner. Yeah, right. Minority I... owner. Interesting. You just get to reap the benefits. Yeah. I mean, there's I go back and forth like when Sunny came out, I was like, "Man, this really shows that there are cooler things than owning a bar just because they do such a bad job of it and they have yeah. no... But owning a good bar that like has people and who like it and i know the bar that you're referring to and this definitely falls under that would be pretty amazing yeah and i i think like you talk about you know how how often would i have to be there i think that i would get my bartending license just so that i could like work bar at or, or tend bar at the bar that i own yeah that's a regret of mine that i never tended bar i should have in my it's something that we should early do early 20s why not yeah like the the classes aren't that uh demanding i believe i think you can do it in like probably a couple months get your bartending license yeah i mean i've uh we all have fantasies from time to time of like getting out of the biz or yeah either or just like like focusing on one real thing that you love doing and then paying the bills other ways whenever i've had those thoughts i've been like and not to say that it's like a menial job or anything but like I bet I'd be I bet I'd be pretty happy if I just like went to a brewery that I loved and this would be a lot uh a lot easier said than done because a lot of people want those jobs but like just like work at a brewery and be the man who pours. Uh, yeah, right. I, I have a couple questions. If you're a if you're a guest bartender because I know that places do this like hey, like having a guest bartender for a couple hours, does that person have to have their bartending license? Oh. They have to be like certified. My, and n number two, if you if you're if you pour at a brewery, do you have to have a bartending license? That's a good question. I would guess no. I would say, guess it's like how you can uh, get beer or wine or a full bar at a wedding. Yeah, that type of thing where maybe you get like a beer or wine license. Maybe who knows. Do you need a bartending license? I just want to be a sommelier, man. You know that. Everyone knows that about me. <laughs> yeah, everybody does know that about you for sure. Uh, do you need a bar bartending license to work at a brewery? Googled. No, you do not need a license to become a bartender. Wow. Interesting. It says so to, to even become a bartender? Yeah. Uh, no, you do. Do you need a license to be a bartender? No, you do not need a license to become a bartender. Some local laws require permits or certificates, but there is no formal nationally recognized and required certification to bartend. Local alcohol laws and what's required to ten bar in one city and state are not the same everywhere. Interesting. Yeah, not a bad idea, man. If you enroll at a bartending school that offers bartending license, it's usually a 40 hour commitment. So, I don't want to do that. I mean, that 40 hours is not that much. Yeah, and actually you're learning things that are interesting. Right. Like, I know how to make some drinks just from Googling them. And everyone goes through some sort of phase where whenever they have friends over, they're like, oh, can I make you this? We've all been there before. So we all, I don't know, it's, it's fun learning how to make drinks. And it's definitely fun making drinks. It's probably not as fun if you don't know the people and they're all mad at you. Wow, in Massachusetts, there aren't any state regulations in place that require a server or bartender to be licensed in order to sell alcohol. Wow. So, rock on. Sounds like you <laughs> don't even need to bar, buy this bar. You can just show up and just be like, yeah, yo, this is the Wild it. West. <laughs> I'm pouring stuff in here, okay? Get out. What we should do, we should ask uh, if, if places around the state want us to like be guest bartenders. That would be amazing. I would love to be a guest bartender. We discussed once upon a time what our dream bar would be if we built a bar. We did, yeah. And I'm I pretty sure what we said. it was exactly modeled after like a gay bar that we'd just been to that was <laughs> a lot of fun. Out. Yeah. Um, Emmys happened. You know this? You seeing this? I didn't watch, but I did know that it happened, and I 
got some takeaways. Number one, uh, Ray Seahorn did not win for Kim Wexler again. Mm -hmm. Has one more shot next year. Um, The three biggies, I'd say, Succession won Best Drama. Lee Jung Jae won Best Actor in a Drama. And Julia Garner over Ray Seahorn for Best Supporting Actress in a Drama. Those were really the three things that I had circled. And then from there... It seemed like I, I also didn't watch. I was watching a ridiculous Monday Night Football game that was That's right. a total blast. It's so weird seeing um, seeing Geno Smith be like a, an old, cheery, happy guy. Where I'm just so used to seeing him be like the tortured kid that has to be on the Jets. Uh, anyway, <laughs> yeah, like I saw this. Like, ah, Brett Goldstein said the f word when he was. Uh, or said fuck when he was accepting his award or whatever and then people complaining that Ted Lasso wins stuff and it's like Ted Lasso discourse just really gotta stop Ted Lasso is a fine fun thing to watch and if you have any harder takes than that on it you might be chunking it but bummer I just can't, on I can't Kim believe. Wexler oh, I mean not even just Kim Wexler better call Saul now 0 for 46 at the Emmys hasn't won a single Emmy which yeah. is out of control. Like one of the best TV shows of all time, of all time across the board. Yeah, and, and I has not won a single Emmy. It's not different than Beyonce in my mind with the Grammys. I know that Beyonce's won a bunch of Grammys, but she hasn't won any quote unquote real Grammys. They they've just kind of stiffed her with album of the year, song of the year, record of the year, et cetera, et cetera. You could still be unbelievable and get shunned by a an award ceremony that is eh, very easy to question. So I yeah yeah I mean like the Emmys are are a weird case where it's like I'm not losing sleep over the Emmys because like the Emmys do these weird things where it happens all the time where it's like how the fuck does this person not have an Emmy right so where it's like they they pick it seems more than more than any other award show Emmys like has weird favorite favoritism where they like key in on two or three shows and they win like every year Mm -hmm. and it's nobody really quite understands why like it's only these shows that are winning but it happens all the time shout out to the grammys the emmys though it did remind me that i never finished season two of hacks so i've been chipping away i've been hacking away at that and what a fun show that is uh that show is amazing uh i uh homegirl won for hacks uh, for smart. nope, uh, guest starring. Why well, can't I think of her name? Uh, Lori Metcalf. Oh, really? Yeah. What's Lori Metcalf's name in that show again? I do not know. It's 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 not Leaf. That's uh, crashing. It's like a one syllable word. Let me see. Uh, I don't know. Good good question. Weed weed <laughs> is she the uh is she the uh the 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 security the guard or whatever tour manager tour ma- yeah yeah tour manager that's who that was yeah i didn't even know that was Lori metcalf that's awesome oh yeah amazing uh so been back on that the big news though from from the emmys was that people are mad at jimmy kimmel they think that he chunked the acceptance speech of uh, Quinta Brunson, who had won for writing for Abbott Elementary. People very mad. He was doing a bit. He was lying down. He was pretending to be passed out drunk. And then Quinta Brunson went up to accept the award, and he just stayed there throughout the whole speech. Everybody mad at him. Yeah. You got any thoughts on this? Well, that would be your job. What you, what you, how are you, how you feeling about it? I mean, I thought like it was just like it was over. It seemed overblown. Like it, it definitely. Uh, I could see why it would be, be like seen in poor taste. Whereas like this person, they're making their speech. It's their big moment, and uh, like that you're gonna have like pictures of Jimmy Kimmel laying on the ground when you look at your pictures of of you winning an Emmy or you giving your Emmy speech. It seemed like a bit distracting and a bit unnecessary. But like, I saw people like saying that it was racist. And that seems like a stretch. I mean, I think that there is definitely uh, racial 
lessons to be learned from it or racial, uh, I don't know, takeaways you could have of like, of course, this black woman wins this thing and the old white guy who's been there forever is making it about making it about himself. I don't think that's Jimmy Kimmel's intent. I just think I think it's a a joke gone wrong that ends up making him look like a real jackass and he was committed too long to the joke and I'm sure he feels bad about it but I do know that he and Quinta Brunson are at the very least very friendly and very supportive of each other because he's a he big time rides for Abbott Elementary and he was kind of pushing that on everybody so she loves him I don't know if it, it she prom- said that he was like one of the biggest people that like helped her get to that point. Right, right. So, she Which doesn't doesn't necessarily like excuse being a jackass and making the moment about yourself, but like, I don't think that he his intention was ever to like take away from her moment. It, that's that's how I feel about it. So he probably wants it back. I'm sure he does. But and I guess it's kind of different when, not that she was in on it, but. I think she maybe got it more than everybody else did because at face value, it just looks like he's being a dick. And it's like, yo, what if this woman doesn't want you there, my guy? Get out of there. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's also the – what is the the Little Mermaid thing? Oh, boy, the Little Mermaid thing. Uh, let me see. Because there was – so the, the Little Mermaid, uh, they released the, the, the teaser trailer. It's going to be on Disney the, Plus, right? The new live-action Little Mermaid. Yeah, I believe so. Uh, and like the big quote unquote scandal, what, well, it was like, it was in the news when they announced it, but like the, there's a black actress playing the little mermaid. Yeah. Halle little, Bailey Ariel is Ariel. Right. And of course you can probably guess the annoying reaction that came from that. But now there was a thing that happened this week, uh, where somebody on Twitter uh basically use CGI or like artificial intelligence or like deep fake technology whatever you want to call it uh to make Ariel white and uh so it says there is a a tweet that said credit to our our artificial intelligence scientists they tagged the person he fixed the little mermaid and turned the woke actor into a ginger white girl he says he can do he can fix the whole movie when it comes out with uh with in 24 hours. It's over for woke cells. And then they ha- clipped a like a video snippet of the actor being replaced by a white ginger girl. And then follow-up tweet, note for Twitter, this is purely for educational purposes. Please do not misinterpret this in a racist way. I am just amazed by high IQ friend who works with artificial intelligence and the stuff he can make and wanted to people wanted to show people his field of study. Just an absolutely incredible back to back tweets uh, because I mean, yeah, definitely don't misinterpret this as being racist when I called the black actress a woke (laughs) actor. And I'm replacing her with a ginger white girl. That is definitely not racist. Please do not misinterpret it as such. And his prompt was his uh, tweet. His Twitter was promptly suspended. <laughs> so people are upset that this mermaid is black instead of white. As if mermaids are a real fucking thing. This is a made up fucking it, it's a person with with a, a, a tail fins something like that. This it's, it's just <laughs> a thing that that we fucking made up. And it's That's like that's like Lord of the the Lord of the Rings too. People are upset that there are black elves in Lord of the Ring in the new Lord of the Rings show. Yeah, it's like if it's a thing that's kind of a person, what do you think people look like? Oh my god. Not to mention you're like you're doing like rules around things that don't exist. That yes, that's what I'm saying. They're <laughs> yeah. like we we make it we're going to make it look more like a mermaid. What's a fucking mermaid look like? <laughs> you just fucking we made that up. And now also can't overlook the fact that now woke just, repl- just refers to people that are not white. 
Oh yeah, yeah. Don't get me started. The woke that. actor, who is just simply a black actress. There was so, a dumbass politician that was uh, saying he was like, "I think our schools should have the A B C's." My opponent cares more about W O K E. And even this dipshit's audience was like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like woke cells. Why do why do why does like why do like the extreme right people love just combining words that shouldn't be combined? I feel Beta like that cuck. happens a lot. Beta cuck. But like that, those are two separate words. Yeah. Like they do like like they love like libtards. Oh right, right. I hear what you're saying. Woke cells, like. They love combining words. It's crazy. Yeah. It's a favorite activity. No good. It's it's funny how there's controversy around movies these days. Things like everybody in Don't Worry Darling, they hate each other. And things like how uh, a movie has a black person in it can really set certain... Really set people over the edge. Can really, can really start a conversation. Really just uh, good healthy place america is right now uh there's there's also a new there's a fucking christmas movie a santa claus movie with david harbour where he murders people which honestly it seems like every year now we're gonna get like a bloody crazy christmas movie and i will happily take that better than having to watch like the the irishman every thanksgiving yeah, no, I don't. I definitely don't hate the trend of of um, like taking a wholesome, beloved thing and and putting a psychotic, deranged twist on it. Gritty. Because we we got we got the um, the Mel Gibson Santa movie a couple yep. of years ago. I enjoyed that. This seems like sort of a the, cut from the same cloth. The Walton Goggins where... one. Don't forget. Walton Goggins one. That, oh that no, was, that, that he, is he, Mel... that was the same oh, yeah, movie. Yeah, right, right. What was that called? It was called like. Uh... Um. Black Christmas or something? No. Oh no, that was no. a. Um, I want to. It was just like um, Saint Nick or something. Uh, it I, was I think it was a one word. Fat title. man. Fat man. Yeah, that's right. He felt like a tank, like a large mammal. That's right. What's wrong with being fat man? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but we uh, we had that one. This one seems cut from the same cloth, except David Harbour seems to be playing. Uh, I think he's like rescuing kids or something. Like yeah. he, he's not he's not really like he's got good intentions as a killer, I believe. Um a real but Jack there's Bauer. also there's also the um there's also the Honey the, uh Winnie the Pooh psychotic movie that. that's coming up too. Can't wait for that. Blood and Honey. So yeah, we're seeing a lot of uh deranged twists on like beloved classics and I I do like that trend. All right, well patreon.com for a deranged twist on Dawson's Creek which famously takes place in Capeside, Massachusetts. Everybody knows that place. Love you, bye.